Okay, so welcome everyone to today's session and have you here from all different parts of the world. And um, it's often debated, you know, what's more important? Is accuracy more important or is um, uh, distance more important? So we say uh, golf is a game of how near as opposed to how far. And Pete, uh, welcome, beautiful, beautiful sunny day up there. You know, thanks, Chris, and thanks everybody for joining us uh, for this uh, well uh, discussed topic of what's more important, distance or close to the pin. Uh, and uh, I was very fortunate along the way to uh, rub shoulders and play alongside of uh, players like Kel Nagel and Peter Thompson. Uh, and uh, just not very long before he passed Peter Thompson, uh, he, he told me, he said, Peter, he says, tell your son, distance is great, but he says, it's, not, it's, it's more, it's a game of how near, not how far. So he won his British Opens quite often by hitting a three wood off the fairway and then hitting a five iron close to the pin while his opposition might have got a wedge and they, they were outside of him. So, you know, it's nice to, to be able to hit it long and straight. A short and crooked is no good. That's for sure. But uh, straightness be, beget distance. Um, a gentleman called Sasha Yuganowski, Sasha Novak, was, he's penned it in the, his book called The Laws of Accuracy. And he said to me uh, early days when we were working together, he said, Peter, he said, don't worry about your students getting distance to start. He says, you get them accurate. He says, they'll get more consistently compress the ball, they'll hit it to their target, they'll relax more, and they'll get the maximum distance that their body will allow them to do it. So that's where we're coming from here today. So I'm, I'm going to let Chris uh, run the show now because he's got a, 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 an itinerary there, or an agenda. So let's go with you, Chris. Well, Pete. So the question is why, how near, as opposed to how far? Um, basically, how near has the ability to control the ball's direction gives the ability to then add power. <clears throat> so, you know, lots of power with a lot of bad direction is no good. Um, if you're going to hit the ball crisply and hit it straight, you know, then, then it gives you the ability to, to be able to add power. Uh, 300 yards in the bushes as opposed to 200 yards in play is not as good. <laughs> okay, so if you hit it 300 metres or 300 yards and you're in the bushes, um, you're out of play. Basically, you can't, um, you know, can't get to the green. Um, and most people that we coach actually want to hit the ball straighter and nearer as opposed to longer. I mean, you've got to have uh, the length to be able to carry things and get it, get it far enough. Um, but really, the first step is to be able to compress the ball and hit it uh, much straighter. Is that right? Correct. Pete? Correct. The the ability to hit the ball to the target will give you a chance to score. Uh, if you can't hit the ball, it's not just straight, it's also the right distance. So power control is, a, is, is very much an element of hitting the ball near. So uh, what I've got set up here is a, a series of targets. Uh, this was introduced to me through uh, the laws of accuracy with Sasha Novak uh, really giving me some added coaching as to why building uh, control first and power second is the way to go. Uh, he was a martial artist. Uh, he, in nine months from b being a non-martial artist, he fought in the Australian Championships and ran third. It was unheard of that someone could become so good so quickly, but he applied these laws to the martial arts he said when you you have to learn to move and 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 strike accurately he said before you worry about the power he says he said and the, the thing of the same thing applies to squash tennis golf and uh any other sport where you got a target that you've got to get to or in so that's that's where we're starting we're starting. Okay, so now, Pete, what, what sort of golf skills do you need 
to develop to get good at um, how near. Um, we want to get good at uh, chipping and pitching. We often say uh, chipping and pitching is the gateway to hitting it near and the gateway to the full swing to, to being in control of that little ball. Okay. <laughs> and as right. Pete was describing, the laws of accuracy when applied um, teaches you to hit it near. So, Pete, you've got this set up. Uh, uh, you can also set this up in, if your backyard's big enough, but just show us what you got set up there and what are the right. laws of accuracy. Well, the laws of accuracy says if you, if you can't get 100% success at hitting at a short distance uh, and then you're trying to hit a long distance, you're, 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 not, you're not going to be consistent. You might get the odd long shot, but more often than not, you're going to hurt your body and your, and your mind because you're going to lose confidence. But uh, distance control is, is senior in playing golf. You have to hit the ball to, in the direction of the target, but also the right length. So I've got a, a little setup here. I'm going to hit the ball this way, and this is approximately a foot, 30 centimetres away from that ruler. Another 30 centimetres to the next ruler. So as a golfer, the number one skill you need to make is being able to make an impact. So understanding that the difference between the address position and the impact position, there is a difference. Now, you're not trying to hit the ball and scoop it up. You want to hit the ball with a descending blow. So I've got control of two things there. I've got control of the club, but I've also in, in turn got control of that golf ball. And as crazy as it may seem, you build your confidence by being competent in this little area here. And before you know it, you know, you go a little further, you, get, you start getting the right distance control and the direction, solid impact. And then uh, what we've got set up now is uh, targets out. Now, from a pitch shot point of view, uh, we, we can either chip and run it to here or we can hit a pitch shot, wanting to land it in that hula hoop there, that, that little one there. So that landed in there, bounced out. But then, you know, gradually you can build confidence at this first one then you can then graduate and then the idea is to go to the second hula hoop watching the ball oops too much power you see i hit it to the third so that's a that might be a lot of power but not to the target okay so when you can get the second if you progressively go out, and then you might like to say, okay, I've got the, the umbrella there in the middle of that uh, rope circle is, um, is five meters, or 10 meters, sorry, it's 10 meters to there. Uh, in our program, uh, the laws of accuracy, Sasha recommends with pitching, get a, an, a, a, an ability to hit the ball in five meter distances. And then before I know it, if you can get a, a number of balls in that first hula hoop or that, that first five meter target where the umbrella is, that landed inside the big circle. So initially, that's the, the game, is it the, trying to get inside the big circle. Now, if I work on that a little bit, just trying to get inside the big circle, Landed on the edge. Tennis, that would count. Golf, maybe not. A little bit thin, but it went in the circle. So the idea is by, by going a little further, a little further, you got your directional accuracy, but then you learn the distance accuracy. And invariably, if you keep doing that, you're going to clean the club off too. Um, our mate D Dustin Johnson says uh, most amateurs don't do this, so you want to clean the. You can see that ball hit nearly in the centre, and so you don't want to practice with a dirty club face because you won't get the backspin or the distance control. So anyway, 
the idea is you'll learn to hit the middle of the bat, middle of the club face. You'll learn to be able to, to bring the club on the right path and uh, you'll build your confidence. There's no doubt. If you, if you go to the range and you're trying to hit, we've got a seven iron here. If I go down the driving range and start hitting balls to a target, that's a, a, a good seven iron distance away. If I hit 10 balls, and out of those 10 balls, if I'm lucky, I'll get one or two to land in, inside a circle that's maybe a 10 foot radius. The other nine, I missed the target. So really, I'm, I'm not building my competence there at all. I'm building a lack of confidence. But eventually, if you work your way out, you'll become more accurate with your long full swings. And that went straight over the umbrella. And uh, so don't start with the long game first. Start short and work out. And uh, whether you're just getting, say, as a beginning golfer, you might just want to get, if you get one, you take a win in the circle. Then you go another one. You go out to a certain distance where you, after a while you can't get one in the, in the circle. Come back and try to get two in the circle here and then work your way out until you can't get two in the circle. And you'll be surprised how you start to build uh, your, your confidence, your ability to swing the club on the right path, the ability to hit the ground in front of the ball, not behind the ball. Uh, and uh, you will build in the process distance control. So uh, back to you, Chris, there's a little bit more to it though, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, excellent, Pete. Um, so that's, um, that's that part. So why building the uh, how near skills lead to increased distance anyway? So, so as we said, golf is a game of how near. Um, because it's very important, the centre of contact is the king to maximum compression. So if you can hit the ball in the middle of the golf club, you get maximum compression. So, for example, last night we had a, a driving session where we are working on um, driving. I had one gentleman swinging at, you know, between 117 and 120 miles per hour. And uh, fantastic speed. Awesome. But he would slice it off to the right and <laughs> he had all this speed but absolutely no control and the compression was was lacking as well so so um so what's what's the point of all the speed when you can't get compression so that's one thing where one of the other gentlemen had a speed of about uh, 102 miles an hour with the driver and he actually hit it further than the guy with 117 because he was getting the compression off the middle of the club face so Compression is king. Um, definitely, definitely much better than depression. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. And, and when the alignments of the swing <coughs> swing are in, uh, there is effortless power, and the ball is uh, much straighter anyway. Correct. Pete, just what can you tell us about, about those points? Yeah, look, uh, compression hitting the ball in the middle of the club face with square impact uh, will get your maximum compression and uh, and in turn the distance for the club is the speed that you swing at so uh extenderness of contact is the first thing that a good golfer or a golfer wants to get to get to become good and uh that requires basically a swing that stays on the right path you, you don't want to be cutting across the ball or hitting it too much from the inside out today the magic is the uh we have uh Companies like TrackMan and Flightscope that have launch monitors, uh, Foresight, GC Quad. Uh, they're, they're very reliable. But there's also less expensive uh, launch monitors that actually are very accurate. Not quite as accurate, maybe, or have as many tools. But basically, when someone uses one of those, they discover that the path you don't want to have the, the path being outside in or too much inside out. Uh, I remember 
I gave a lesson to Peter Senior just about two or three weeks after he had just won three tournaments, the big three tournaments in Australia, and he beat Greg Norman in the three of them. And uh, Greg Norman complained about his putting. About he had he had the big long putter and he was putting holding he was putting very well, but. I, I had him down to my place because he had pl- had a couple of weeks holiday and he'd lost his feel. And he said to me, he said, Peter, he said, I don't know. He said, I lost my swing. So I had a, a golf tech uh, at that time. You could tell the swing club, club had speed in the path. He came down and he was hitting his driver. He hit 20 drivers off this, off this pad. And in the three tournaments against Greg Norman, he was out driving him which was amazing because Greg Norman's a long driver. Uh, but when he hit these balls, every every path was one plus inside out one degree square, outside in. It was, it was amazing how much on path through the ball he was. The squareness of contact was solid. We had a face tape and he was hitting it right in the middle of the bat. And uh, on top of that, his club head speed was 101, 102, 109, not 109, 101, 102. I couldn't believe he was only swinging at 101 mile an hour. Because at at that stage, and he was winning the tournaments, he was hitting it long. Uh, I I just know that uh, it was was the squareness of contact that was obviously not only helping him hit the ball to the, the middle of the fairway, but it was also giving him his maximum distance. So... Uh, and that's crazy. He was, it was amazing. Obviously, the other end is putting is also important, but hitting the ball solid in the middle of the bat is number one when it comes to to building your maximum distance for your physical strength. Uh, yeah, like I think uh, what the, the legal um, legal requirement in a driver is 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 it's you can't have 1.5 is that correct peter 1.50 or higher that's uh, the coefficient yeah that's the uh the compression uh factor uh when you add it all together it's club head speed plus ball speed and you can see the difference between them there's uh if you've got club head speed of 100 mile an hour and you hit it dead center uh, you, you're going to get 150 mile an hour ball speed off the club face. That, and, uh, that would be the maximum you're allowed. That's the trampoline effect. Yeah, uh, after that, they, they're not allowed to use those uh, those faces that can springboard the ball off. And then, and that's on an absolute perfect, perfect impact. <clears throat> so it's quite interesting just tracking, you know, people's ability to be able to perfect. I think this gentleman last night who had the all his speed, his his impact uh, coefficient was about one point one point two six to one point three. So he had all his speed, but was losing the impact, so he lost all his distance. Yes, sir. Well, the uh, the, the 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 fun of the game is being able to repeat or get close to repeating uh, your ability to hit the ball solid. And uh, what we can tell you is applying the laws of accuracy is, is the way to go. Right? When Sasha first, uh, Sasha, you, Sasha Novak, the, the book, The Laws of Accuracy, came to me, he said, you know, he said, I had one guy, he said, in three months, he was able to hit it out to 70 metres to a circle that was 10 foot radius, that's three metres radius, uh, 20 foot diameter. He said he could hit the ball into that circle. I think it was 70 times in a row. He could land it in that circle from 70 meters. I said, I said that's not possible. He says, well, you, you can try it. Uh, I've, I've had students get out to uh, 30, 30 meters, landing it into that c- circle, on, not on a green. Uh, they could land it in the circle and stop it in the circle 100 times in a row out to 30 meters. Now, that's a lot. That's that's for someone that really wants to become really good. But for most of us, uh, we won't have that sort of desire to hit 100 in a row uh, into this circle here. So now if you get 95, oops, 
zero, so I've got to start again. But I could get to 95 here, and if I miss the 96, I have to, the idea is to start again until you can get 100% in the circle. Land it in the circle. Watch the ball. So, uh, uh, applying this principle a little bit and then a little bit more, you, you'll get uh, your calibration factor of distance control will get, get greater. Your centeredness of hit will get greater. You won't, in the process, destroy your body. Uh, I sadly saw Jason Day as a young fella. My son Ben caddied for him when he won the Junes medal, the last one of the last amateur events he played before he turned pro. And while he was down there, it, he was just going flat out. And he did a, an exhibition for the PGA uh, with his coach, and he was hitting a five iron like over 200 metres, so 220. It was unbelievable. But he was going so hard. I said to one of the other pros at that event, I said, I, I don't know how long he's going to last. His back's going to have to give out. And uh, he gave the same advice to uh, Bryson DeChambeau. He said, you don't want to go, go flat out. He says, look what happened to me. And it wasn't long after that that Bryson uh, uh, damaged his wrist. So uh, basically, distance, uh, you, don't, you, don't, you want to get effortless power, not powerless effort. So when, I, when you or anyone swings the golf club, you want to use the, the force of the swing, the swinging force that you throw, and let the let the, the the centrifugal force, the momentum, use gravity and and get those forces to work for you rather than over overwork your muscles. Uh, you'll you'll build up your your uh, your ability to hit fast and and strong releases. And when I hit the harder you hit a club that's got 67 degrees a lot, a lot of it goes up in the air as opposed to a, a longer iron, then, then you're going to put more force into the back of the ball. But it's the same principle. You want to hit the ball coming in from, into the back of the ball, just slightly inside, down and out through the ball, and then allow the club to swing up and around. So the club travels in a, in a circle. So as I hit down on this ball, You might have seen that, and the cane went straight over the umbrella. But it, there's, the technique is important. Good grip, good stance. Develop your technique and apply it in baby steps. And I think you'll discover that you'll get the power as you build your, your accuracy. You won't build accuracy yes. from power. All right. Very good, Pete. Um, well, I hope... Everyone got uh, some really good pointers out. Um, really, as we said, really important to build the chipping, the pitching, um, the compression on the ball, and um, that will then lead to to better uh, and longer golf shots. So, thanks, Pete, for your time. I uh, look forward to seeing everyone um, either in the Breaking Eighty program or we look forward to seeing you in the next little session. Thanks, everyone. Thanks very much, Chris. Thanks, everyone, for your, uh, your interest. And we look forward to seeing you all on the leaderboard. Okay, thank you. Cheers.